when you want to express something which doesn't fit into the limitations of logic, poetry becomes very useful. In those four lines, you can hit somebody in such a way that it really hits them and forever they'll remember those four lines just transforms their life. So poetry is a powerful tool like that. Karam and a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm delighted to be here at the launch of Sadhguru's new book of poems, Eternal Echoes. There are many of you here who are familiar with some of Sadhguru's work and this is a chance to immerse yourself in over 500 pages of it. But for those of you, perhaps some of you online and elsewhere, who are more acquainted with Sadhguru as the proponent of inner engineering, as the proponent of yoga as a science, of technologies, of well-being, this is a chance to be acquainted with a somewhat different Sadhguru. And for those of you who've known Sadhguru through his many avatars online as uh, the dynamic navigator of the external world, as a charismatic public speaker, as the initiator of multiple projects, as an aviator, a golfer, a motorcyclist. This is yet another chance to be acquainted with a somewhat different Sadhguru. Because this is the province of the lyric, not of logic. This is the province of the twilight world, not the province of 100 watt illumination. And Sadhguru himself describes himself in these pages at various junctures in particularly interesting ways. At one point, he describes himself as a wanderer of the twilight world. At another point, as a borderline being. At yet another point, as a fathomless empty page. And at yet another point, as one who can see in the dark of the cosmic womb. These were some of the, the images that I took away with me at the close of this book. It's almost like having a glimpse into a mystic's journal. It's a series of utterances in which we see a person not particularly concerned with issues of form or craft or even grammar, but what there is in abundance is glimpse after glimpse into the unimaginably eventful inner life of a mystic. And this remained with me above all. I think for those who are fascinated by the many faces, the many dimensions of Satguru, this offers a glimpse into him as that borderline being, standing on the cusp of diverse worlds, as a dual citizen of both the darkness and the light. And for those who are seekers, this book offers the chance to be transported to a place that I think every seeker is passionately and deeply curious about, which is the state of mystical union. And for devotees and disciples, this offers the chance to be transported to a place that every devotee yearns to be, which is the heart of the Guru. And on that note, I'd like to invite on stage the author of Eternal Echoes, Sadhguru. I'm going to ask you at this point not to read the one that I'd originally intended, but to move on to your Guru poems, where you actually speak of your own master. These are among the most uh, spare poems in the book and perhaps amongst the strongest. So it would be a pity to bring this to a close without reading those poems. Where is that?
my master, brooding, squinting, staring, I could not hit the mark. He walks in like a wanton monarch with a crooked stick and he makes his mark. It's very difficult to not ask Sadhguru to read some of the poems that I think are the most unusual in this book, which is poems of utter tenderness, too much tenderness, or that? just tenderness. What is that? 268. Too much tenderness. Tenderness. Well, let's go too much. <laughs> no? Any of the tender poems. There are three of them. And let's do tenderness. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> tenderness. The irony of life that I should now be doing everything to bond myself, to bind myself, to demarcate boundaries that no one should cross, doing my best to be self-centered, all these antics just to keep this, cum this crumbling cage intact. With the work done, why linger on? Depart gracefully, says my mind. But what to do with lovers who have lost themselves in the process of loving? Too many lovers, the very remembrance brings tears of too much tenderness, so I will act brash and go on. We have Kangana Ranot in the audience, yes. Namaskaram Sadhguruji. Sadhguruji, your poems are um, so wonderful. Hey, you just got the book, you haven't read it. Come I have, on. I have. Some of them I've read. There is this poem which I just saw, uh, Too Much Tenderness. I think you may have written about somebody you lost in your life. So do you feel a sense of, you know, can you putting your story out there? Is it cathartic for you? What is <laughs> the purpose of it? See, only if you have something pent up, you need a cathartic, cathartic process. I… do I look like I've gathered any substance living here? No, you don't. And uh, what you said about these being absolute reflections, I do agree with that also. No, I mean to say, catharsis is meaningful only when you have some pent up stuff. So this is something, uh, I know I was in United States and this journalist was interviewing me, Sadhguru, all the time you're busy, how do you unwind yourself? I said, I don't wind myself up, first of all. <laughs> Why do you wind yourself up and then unwind yourself? I don't wind myself up, so where is the question of catharsis? <laughs> <laughs>